Okay, but seriously, I'm recording now. Hi everyone, I am Jenny Malloy of Lights Camera Kale for Workplace Wellness. Today I am joined by Dr. Lynn Saladino. She is a clinical psychologist. She has a full-time practice in New York City and she is a psychology editor and columnist for Health Magazine. Thanks for joining us, Lynn. Hi, thanks for having me, Jenny. So today, Lynn has for us three tips to support your mental health while working from home. And I'm going to let you kick it off, Lynn, with tip number one. Absolutely. Um, I think we're all starting to adjust to being at home. Um, and one of the main things that I'm noticing is that routine and separation between work and your regular home life uh, is, is as important as you can make it. Um, so what I'm finding is that a lot of times when I'm speaking to people, they're not really getting out of their pajamas and they're kind of sitting and there's not a lot of distance between, um, between their work and their home. Some people can't make much distance if they live in a really small space, but any way that you can make, um, make a delineation between one and the other. So getting up in the morning, maybe setting an intention for the day, putting action Actual real clothes on, even if it's jeans, um, you know, and and sort of having a bit of movement maybe in the morning, something that gets you into a specific routine, uh, so that you can separate the two would be great. I love this idea of setting a routine, and I always encourage people to solidify that routine as soon as possible. And the more consistent you can be about it, the more concrete it will be. Absolutely. Absolutely. The other thing, you know, even in terms of that is setting up that difference between your workspace and your home space. I think we never really knew how long we would be uh, out of the workplace for, but now it's looking like it's going to be a bit longer. So having um, a nice setup where you feel that you can go and feel comfortable uh, so that you can, you can really have that separation. And I would say the same thing on the other side of your workday, uh, you know, separating out, okay, this is going to be the time when I step away from my computer, maybe step away from those video calls. Uh, you may even want to change back into your sweats. You know, it seems funny to be changing all day, but it does help to give yourself <laughs> that difference. So kind of breaking those things up and, and yeah. having a few things. And this moves us on to your second tip. So please share. Sure, absolutely. Um, so I would say uh, just, you know, and it kind of springs off of some of, of what we were talking about, but I think taking active breaks is going to be important. So the difference between this is that, you know, it can be tempting to work all day long. Um, one of the things that's going on right now is both we're focusing on trying to be productive at work, setting up this brand new routine, but we're also dealing with so much of our own stress that we do need some breaks. What I'm hearing a lot is that if we aren't taking active breaks, like taking a walk during the day um, or saying, okay, I'm going to take an hour out and I'm going to maybe prepare something for dinner. Um, we start to mindlessly eat. We start to, you know, just be scrolling on our phone, looking through, um, looking through the news, which can sort of add to our stress. So I've been really encouraging people um, to take an active break. So to say, okay, from this time to this time, I'm going to get up from my new work desk, desk station uh, and, and actually either get out, get into the sunshine if you can. Maybe that's the time when you can do just maybe a quick little workout or you know something that just gets you moving. But if it's an active, conscious break, you'll get more out of it than something that just kind of leaks in like an Instagram scroll or, you know, or just like mindlessly eating while you're half on your computer. And so for your third tip, um, yes. what is the third thing that we can do to support our mental health during this time? Sure. So the third thing um, I would say is protect your sleep as much as possible. Um, again, you know, we're often dealing with the anxiety of the day, we're focusing on work, which is kind of pushing down some of our own worries and some of our own anxieties, maybe about our family or our parents. Um, and then what happens is that once we're done with work during the day, it's all flooding in kind of at the same time. And then all of a sudden, we're expecting ourselves to get a nice, you know, six to nine hours of sleep and our brain can't turn off because it's starting to, it is doing that processing that we were just talking about. So a few tips that I like to offer with that, um, and many of which you may have heard before, but now is more important than ever to do them, uh, I think is going to be giving yourself a little bit of time before you go to bed to, you know, even if it's 30 minutes, 
try if you can not to scroll on your phone um, before you know you go to bed because all it takes is one little article about somebody else who's dying from this and it can keep you up all night. Uh, so I would say if you can take a break from that. Um, also, I think it's when you're home, it's even more tempting. I don't know. I found this to drink coffee more than you normally would. Mm -hmm. uh, coffee and anxiety are basically a one-to-one. -one. So it can really, you know, if you're finding that you're too jittery or you're over caffeinating during the day, um, that can keep you up at night. So if you can even try switching you know, to tea or trying to limit your coffee intake, that would be really wonderful uh, to sort of help protect your sleep. Um, you know, some people use some sleep meds, but, um, you know, I try to limit that as much as possible and try to just get that relaxation instead. So kind of observing how caffeine may be impacting us, maybe if we're drinking a little bit too much caffeine, how that impacts our sleep, um, and refraining from scrolling on our phone. Now, if I am not scrolling on my phone, what am I doing? Preferably um, reading something that does not have a blue screen or blue light coming from a screen. So uh, anything, magazines, books, um, actually even Kindle is fine, uh, but something, anything with a screen typically gives off a blue light that can keep our brains going and makes us think that it, it is, it tricks us into thinking that we're getting more daylight, so it's messing up your sleep cycle. Uh, so I would recommend doing some of those things. For some people, again, it depends how fitness oriented you are. Um, it's different per person, uh, but sometimes even just getting a little bit of stretching in before bed, um, you know, or even just doing, again, maybe some breathing exercises, things like that, having a nice cup of like herbal tea before bed, um, you know, so things that may just sort of help your body to know that it is okay and safe and calm enough to calm itself down enough to be able to sleep. That's the goal. So it sounds like we can connect to different methods of calming down, whether it's physical, with stretching, whether it is reading, but on a paper book, or uh, I like to do simple crosswords before I go to bed, word searches. Um, I've worked with clients that like to read comic books or light, uh, childlike, uh, like Harry Potter books before bed, um, or poetry, for instance. So something calming and something that resonates with you, it sounds like. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's almost impossible right now not to want to watch the news all the time. But if you think about it, if you're reading it right before bed and then you wake up and you first look at your phone, you know, it's sort of, it's, it's hard to get that calm, nice, restful sleep in there in between. But so we can do some things. Thank you for all that great insight. This has been Lynn Saladino. You can find more about her at drlynnsaladino.com. I'm Jenny Malloy of Lights, Camera, Kale for Workplace Wellbeing. You can check us out at LinkedIn and on our YouTube channel and go to lightscameracale.com for more great tips and resources and fun. See you all soon.